So the only thing that uh, can be mildly exciting about today's clean is that if you go way back in my YouTube history, I actually rotovac this same exact apartment in the crappy cell phone video uh, with the uh, phone turned vertically. It's hard to watch, but it's one of the first videos I posted on YouTube. And I don't know how many one, two, three tenants have been through this apartment since then, but this is the next time we've cleaned it. I think that was about a year and a half ago, so it's probably just one lease through. Uh, but I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, both on YouTube comments and on Facebook and uh, about people saving up or starting their own carpet cleaning business. Uh, so I thought I'd take a few minutes to give some education during this video if that's something that you think you may be interested in. And if you're not at all interested, then just turn my volume down and enjoy the uh, nice satisfying clean we're going to get wanted in this uh, rental standard carpet. Uh, it's, uh, it's not as bad as it was the first time, that's for sure, but you can definitely see a difference, especially in this first bedroom in the video. So, uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, if you think you would like to start a carpet cleaning company, uh, the first thing is I'd, I would tell you my first word of advice would be you have got to be nuts. Uh, because this is, a lot of people don't realize I make it look easy, but this is really, really hard work. And if you work really, really hard and push yourself really, really far, you might make as much as you would make in a manufacturing job somewhere in a plant. Uh, if you see posts on Facebook or people throwing $100 bills around, the fact is you will not, it's very unlikely that you will get rich from carpet cleaning. Uh, the ones that have gotten rich are generally off the truck and they've done it through the industry, but not through pulling a wand. Uh, in all likelihood, a single truck operation, uh, if, you, if you mark it well after the first few years of growth, is gonna average about $100,000 a year. And that is gross profit. Uh, so if you look at that, uh, as far as taking your costs and all out, you're going to make the equivalent of 20 or 25 dollars a year uh, so you are definitely not going to get rich now it's a great industry it will support you and a family uh, if you're if you're judicious on your spending if you market well and grow your company you can it can provide a great income for your family but you shouldn't go into it with the idea that you're going to get rich uh, somebody on one of the Facebook pages shared, a, I think it was a Pinterest post uh, that said, you know, you could spend six grand on a carpet cleaner, a, uh, you know, a portable carpet cleaner, and within the first year you could make some, some hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and they figured up you could do six houses a day or something crazy like that. And that's just a load of horse crap. So... To get real with you, you, like I said, you can make a, a living, but you're not going to get rich, and you're definitely not going to 
make a huge amount in your first year or two years of operation. And that's why uh, I, I know a statistic I've heard before is three or four out of every five new carpet cleaning businesses fail within the first year. Uh, and the, the biggest reason for that is you don't have adequate savings or adequate funds to rely on when business inevitably does not pick up the way you envision. Uh, I know I don't post a huge amount of videos on Facebook and the biggest reason for that many people don't know is I actually still work full time outside of carpet cleaning. I love to clean carpet uh, and that's why I continue to do it but I don't do it for the money because I make a significantly better pay from my day job as an engineer. Uh, so although I'd love to clean carpet full time, I can't justify it because it just, the, the money isn't there. But if you were going to start a business, I would suggest, if at all possible, uh, start part time and keep a day job. Uh, and that will allow you to provide an income for your family while your business grows. Because it will definitely take time to grow. I think the first year of me starting part-time, I would go, and of course I wasn't marketing very strongly, but I would go uh, weeks without a job. And the first winter will starve you out. And if you don't believe me, uh, just look on the Facebook buyer-sell groups and look at all the equipment for sale used brand new where a company has not made it through their first winter. Uh, so if you want to be successful, the first thing I would tell you is have an ample supply of savings or funds for when things get slow and if at all possible have another source of income at least for the start of your new carpet cleaning business. Uh, a few other things to keep in mind is you don't need to start a new business in a lot of debt or with the every newest and latest greatest piece of equipment that you see on the boards and on Facebook or on sale that sales guys trying to talk you into. Uh, you can start a very successful cleaning business uh, with a reasonable amount of equipment but the one thing you can't do without is knowledge. You need to instead of spending all that money on a sixty or seventy thousand dollar truck mount and van Spend money on training, uh, on ride-alongs, on the basics, and buy a decent used machine uh, from one of those businesses that went about it the wrong way and went out of business after the first year. Let them make that mistake. Spend your time and money, especially your first year or even before you start, on education because one bad job is going to quickly ruin any chance of growth you might have uh, just due to the competition and the reputation that you'll get. So first step to any carpet cleaning business, savings and finances. And the second step is education. Uh, so once you get those two in order, Maybe you've bought a used truck mount or a nice portable unit. Maybe you've cleaned for your friends and your family. Maybe you're starting to pick up some regular customers. Well, before you go into business and charge money for cleaning carpet, there are a few things that you absolutely have to have. Uh, the biggest being insurance. You need uh, commercial vehicle insurance on whatever vehicle you're using to clean. You need what's called inland marine coverage on your equipment which is everything that is not physically attached to the van and you need general liability insurance uh, for if in just in case you screw something up for a customer uh, these things do not have to be expensive uh, but but it's not negotiable you have to have that coverage uh, and once you get started with any commercial jobs, they're going to require it anyway. So you may as well go ahead and get it as soon as possible. 
if you have any employees, you need to have workers' comp coverage. Uh, and any commercial work is going to require that anyway, but it's for your own safety that you have this because you will quickly lose everything that you've built if one employee gets hurt or if you have to pay for a carpet replacement or a floor replacement. Uh, so protect yourself. Uh, provide your company with insurance. Uh, make sure you have the education. It's okay to learn from the school of hard knocks, but you need to have that support in place so you can make educated decisions uh, when cleaning. So the, the uh, top way to learn uh, is experience. So you can go to class all day long. You can watch every YouTube video on carpet cleaning in the world. But the only way to get good at cleaning carpet is to clean carpet. Uh, so I would suggest a ride along uh, first before you even buy equipment to make sure you even want to do it. And then clean for your friends, clean for your family, clean for anybody that will let you in the door. And that gives you the opportunity to get uh, before and after photos, videos, experience, and feedback. These things are going to be critical when you go to start marketing and pushing uh, to customers. So once you start your carpet cleaning company, uh, there's videos and classes and schools and people out there uh, that can guarantee you the world when it comes to lead generation. Uh, but the best, most sustainable way to build your business, hands down, is to do a good, reliable job every time, get solid reviews from your customers, and use their word of mouth to grow your business. You will start, as soon as you create a business, uh, you're going to start getting calls from lead generation like Home Advisor, like Angie's List, like Yelp, and uh, thumbtack uh, and you're more than welcome to pour money down into those there is jobs to be had uh, with that method some people are quite successful with it but as a new company they will bleed you dry before you see a return on your investment I would suggest start slow and ramp up slowly and build your customer base uh, and remember as I recommended you should be working at least part-time while you start your business so you have some form of income and that way you're able to start slow and develop your experience and customer base so you can be successful in the long term. It's very easy to go out there and pour a lot of your savings into marketing and get a lot of new customers and clean for them once and then you'll never hear from them again because they weren't satisfied or you didn't know what you're doing like you should have or they were uh, shot flashes in the pan for customers that just didn't want it done very often, or they weren't willing to pay your prices, and maybe you started out dirt cheap and then you realized you needed to raise your prices, uh, which is why you need to start slow. And that brings me to my last point, uh, which is pricing. You, when you start your company, you need to make a decision on where you're gonna be at uh, with your pricing. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being one of the guys that does, does the whole house for $99 or five rooms for $99. But you need to base every business decision you make when it comes to your equipment, when it comes to your process, on your price. So if you want to be one of those guys, then you need to work towards efficient, fast equipment and you don't even need a CRB, you don't need all that stuff. You need one good pre-spray and a wand, and you can be a splash and dash cleaner. And, and that's a perfectly legitimate way to do business. On the other end of the spectrum, you got us guys that charge significantly more uh, and provide significantly more service. Uh, that's the route that I chose to take early on in my career. And that's the route that I will continue to take. Uh, but like I said, that's a choice that you need to make. But whichever choice you make, uh, that's the way you need to pattern your business model. Uh, that's the way you need to train. If you're not going to specialize in high-end upholstery, 
then there's no need to spend money learning how to clean high-end upholstery. I would always suggest an IIRC class for certification no matter what price range you're at. I would suggest adequate equipment, adequate training, adequate time, and you will be, you can be successful in this industry. Uh, but you need to be prepared that it's not as easy as some of these guys make it look. Uh, just a little bit of my background, I've been cleaning carpet basically since I was born. Uh, my father went out and took a small loan and started a cleaning company when I was basically a week old. Uh, and if you look carefully through some of my vi videos, you'll see the old Kent 175 floor scrubber that he bought then that I still use today. Uh, but to make a sh uh, long story short, uh, throughout his life, uh, he struggled to be successful because he started without the finances to grow. And he was always uh, struggling to charge enough to provide a service that he wanted to provide. So when I took over the business a few years ago, we made the decision to uh, invest in solid equipment, the best equipment, uh, the best processes, and charge accordingly. And and I have been quite successful in that. In fact, I'm, uh, I'm not bragging, but my income is equivalent to a, a quite a quite a decent full-time job even though I'm only working about two hours a day in most cases so I hope that answers some of the questions that I've been getting on the channel uh, and on the Facebook and in person that you know if, if this is something you want to do by all means I don't want to hold you up but I just want to give you a fair warning that it's not easy uh, and give you a few of the things that you need to keep in mind in the business uh, and as you can see, we're finishing this apartment up. I'm working my way out the door now. Uh, and you can kind of see the difference right there of, of how good we're doing here. And this is a pretty quick one. We just hit it with a pre-spray, a bio-break with Citrusol. Uh, crank the temperature up. And uh, after a good pre-vacuum, of course. And then just working our wand on the way out. Uh, it's been a while since I cleaned it, but I don't think anybody lived in this for the full lease. And it's in pretty good shape with the exception of the one bedroom. It's not too dirty. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed watching the video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this off now. And if you have any other questions, never hesitate to ask me. You can look me up on Facebook. Uh, you can leave me comments below. If you enjoy my videos, please like and subscribe. Please let me know what you enjoy seeing, and we will be glad to try to accommodate that. And uh, once again, thanks for watching. Make sure you ring the bell, subscribe, watch the rest of our real carpet cleaning videos. I hope you enjoyed.